What's up guys, Joe Snow right here. So uh, today we're going to discuss about reverse engineering again. This is a, another part of my reverse engineering for beginners tutorials. And as uh, I asked you on Twitter, and it concluded with 74% for yes, that'd be great. I will create today a video about jailbreaking and the most important parts of the jailbreaking. And I'm going to start in this video, it will be a short series, but I'm going to start in this video with the boot chain because there's a lot of things to be discussed. Uh, there are a lot of things to be discussed in here and we cannot conclude the uh, video with everything in here in one single seven minutes or less video. So I'm going to start with the boot chain today. It's extremely important, so you better pay attention. And if you are interested in jailbreaking and into um, exploitation in general for iOS, then this is good for you. Well, I'm going to start by uh, telling you what the uh, boot chain is. But before starting, I'm going to tell you that everything we're going to discuss today, it is in the description. And you have a lot of links for documentation, for additional documentation, because as I said, we cannot, uh, we cannot cover everything in a seven minute video. So you have a lot of resources in the description as well. Be sure to check them out. So what is the boot chain? Well, on the iPhone wiki, you will find that the boot chain or secure room, how is uh, also called, is the system by which Apple tries to ensure that only signed or trusted code is loaded on the uh, iOS device. This is correct. And this is actually the boot chain. See, the boot chain, as you can see from the uh, image I'm going to have on the screen right now, uh, it consists in a couple of uh, different modules that load each other and between the loadings, there are of course a couple of checks that Apple put in place in order to prevent, of course, an authorized uh, access to the uh, code. So it starts with the boot room. Now, pretty important about the boot room, the boot room is the first significant code that starts on the device. Actually, it cannot be patched by Apple and this is of course extremely good and exploits like Lime Rain because there are exploits for the boot room, for example, the Lime Rain created by Geohot cannot be patched by Apple without releasing a new device. This is not a part of the firmware, it is a part of the device itself. It's fused inside the, um, the chip of the device, so it cannot be modified, it's read only. Of course, it, uh, it prepares and loads the hardware initialization. So everything that means hardware is controlled by the boot room at the uh, boot time. It is exactly 64 kilobyte in size and you can actually dump it. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, today in this video, we're going to have a little bit of theory, but I'm going to also make some practice in the next video. So be sure to check them out. If you have an uh, iPhone 4 or an older device, iPhone 3GS or older, that is uh, of course compatible with Lime Rain uh, exploit, you can, uh, you can use a tool that I'm going to have in the description linked to dump the actual boot room and to load it inside Hopper. If you don't know what Hopper disassembler is, be sure to check out my first video from the playlist. Right, so uh, what does the boot room do uh, aside of the hardware initialization? It loads the LLB. Now, uh, LLB or low level bootloader is actually um, an important part, but it is a part of the firmware. So the iOS firmware contains this thing, this LLB file with the firmware, which means that if you find an exploit on the low level bootloader, Apple can patch it in the next version by of course releasing a new iOS with this file patched, uh, compared with the bootroom that cannot be patched. Um, a device for which you find a um, bootroom exploit, for example, the iPhone 4, as I said, has the Lime Rain exploit. It is jailbreakable for life. You can you cannot patch the jailbreak on it. It will always be jailbreakable. So, um, continuing, what does the uh, low-level bootloader do? The LLB is actually loading the iBoot. We're going to talk about iBoot in a couple of seconds. And uh, it performs the rest of the uh, initialization that kernel did not perform, uh, sorry, that uh, the uh, bootroom did not perform. It actually uh, is able to use the GID key. GID key is actually the group ID key. Uh, it's an extremely powerful key that is used for decrypting everything inside iOS. And every decryption made uses this key that is stored inside the uh, chip as well. It's like the bootroom. It's not accessible without uh, proper 
component which resides in uh, either the boot room, the iBoot or the low level bootloader, the LLB. Only this tree from here can access the GID key or the group ID key. And this group ID key is shared by the devices that have the same application processor. So um, there is also another key called the uh, unique device um, key. That key is used to protect your data and uh, Apple says that it's unique for all devices. I doubt, but yeah, this is what they say. So um, after performing everything it can perform, for example, the initialization and loading the iBoot by um, checking its signatures first, it jumps to the iBoot. What is iBoot? Well. As you can see from the uh, documentation page I'm having right here now on the iPhone Wiki, you can find a lot of information, but the iBoot is the, um, the second stage bootloader of the devices. So on the uh, previous uh, components, on the uh, bootroom and on the LLB, if it fails or if something is corrupted, your device will go into DFU mode or device firmware upgrade mode, so you can restore it with iTunes iBoot no longer redirects you to the uh, DFU mode, it redirects you to recovery mode. A recovery mode is that mode where you have the iTunes logo on your screen and a cable, you probably know it. Uh, it can be accessed using a USB or serial and there are a couple of tutorials on my channel. Um, you can talk with um, iBoot and send ver various commands. It is a part of the firmware, so uh, for example if you find an iBoot exploit, it can be patched, so um, you better be careful with that. And uh, it randomizes the kernel base address with 8-bit system. So um, I'm, we're going to talk about the kernel in a couple of seconds. The, um, the kernel itself is different and we, when we're talking about jailbreaking and we're, when we're talking about iOS security, we have two different eras. The era uh, from the uh, first iOS version to the iOS 6 and the era after the iOS 6. So um, once iOS 4 was released, the kernel itself, we have some information right here, started to use ASLR um, and it's called KASLR on the kernel, which means kernel address space layout randomization. Uh, in order to make this thing clear, I'm going to have another picture right now on the screen which explains a little bit how uh, ASLR and KASLR work. So, as I said, iBoot uses an 8-bit randomization for the kernel base address. Then the KASLR is one byte, which means 256 sliding possibilities. Let me explain what sliding possibilities means. The kernel itself is loaded at boot time inside the RAM or random access memory. Now, in the um, picture I'm showing you right now, you can see the kernel code is with pink, the white structure is the RAM, the space you have in your RAM, and the rest of possible locations are empty. The kernel code can only be in one position at a time, but every time you restart your device, due to the KASLR, the kernel code will be in a different location. For example, now at this boot is in the uh, area it is right now where it's pink, but at the next boot it can go up here to the um, to the final uh, right, or it can go to the middle, or it can go to the upper middle, and so on. It slides from right to left or from left to right, and um, you probably want to understand why. Well, by using this security method, Apple prevents a, uh, an attacker or a hacker from determining where the kernel is loaded inside the memory. So if you know where the kernel is loaded, you can use um, return-oriented programming in order to um, perform various hacks on it. But if you don't know where to start, if you don't know where the kernel starts and where it ends, then it's harder for you. Of course, jailbreakers do detect by using various exploits where the kernel is loaded. but usually you should not be able to do that. And this was started on iOS 4. Now, uh, speaking about the kernel, after the kernel starts, it also enforces some verifications. And these are extremely important for jailbreaking because you need to patch them if you're interested into jailbreaking. So, the, uh, the kernel is actually using page verification. So, page signature verification. When you start an application, the kernel will verify first if the application has the code signing intact, if it has the SHA1 verification. If it does, 
it will pass the application to the AMFEI, which is a kernel extension. We talked about kernel extensions in my previous video, and you can understand that by uh, going to the channel right here and to the uh, playlist on iOS reverse engineering for beginners. But the kernel itself doesn't verify if the application signature is valid. It only verifies if the application signature exists. Then AMFEI does that. Kernel contains kernel extensions and AMFEI or Apple Mobile File Integrity verifies if the signature is actually correct or not. If it's not, the application of course won't start. Uh, when you're trying to jailbreak, you need to be able to execute code, arbitrary code inside a kernel. So you need to first patch the uh, MFEI, you need to, uh, to uh, patch the sandboxing because your application cannot escape its own sandbox. And we talked about sandbox right here in my, um, in my video, in this video, uh, you can check it out. And after that, you need to be able to execute your code. But in order to execute your code, you need to make sure you, you are not going to crash the kernel because you cannot jailbreak if you crash the kernel, right? We're going to talk more about this in, um, in a couple of videos. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the user land. What is user land? So after the kernel boots, it's going to go into the user land or the application part. Uh, the application part, of course, has a lot of security that goes hand in hand with the kernel and with the uh, AMFEI text or kernel extension. And as I said, all the applications on the Apple devices must have a code signed. Uh, jailbreakers usually use various methods or exploits in order to patch this code signing to always return uh, the fact that it's okay, or to use fake signing to uh, make the kernel believe that the application was signed. Of course, you need a lot of exploits to do that. So, what are the uh, the rest of security uh, implementations on the uh, user land? When you're installing an application from the App Store, the actual binary of the application has a fortified form, so um, you cannot decrypt it or you cannot uh, get the uh, classes out of it, the headers or the classes out of it, that easy because it has a, uh, an encrypted form compared with the system applications. We talked about that in my previous video. Also, I'm going to conclude this video with um, talking about the uh, mmap and um, mprotect. We need to patch mmap and mprotect, and th these are parts of the kernel, in order to gain read, write, and executable uh, access. So uh, if we don't patch that during a jailbreak, we won't be able to use tweaks. Most of the tweaks, Syria tweaks, use this, um, require this mmap and um, memory protect to be patched in order for them to do their job. So um, there are a couple of jailbreak types, as you can see. And the first one, the most important and most used nowadays is the uh, user land exploit jailbreak which means that it loads an application, a normal application that has um, a maliciously crafted code that will patch the kernel and render the execution of Cydia and the stashing and so on. The next kind of jailbreak, and it's no longer used due to the uh, number of exploits required and the complexity, is the uh, actual boot chain exploit jailbreak. For example, exploits based on Limerain are doing this. They patch the iBoot, they patch the kernel, they patch the LLB eventually, and it uses custom RAM disks and custom DFU in order to load the components. This is no longer um, this is no longer good for the uh, nowadays devices because it requires a lot a bootroom exploit, which is extremely hard to find. And the last type of jailbreak is the custom-made farmer jailbreak, which is still not used due to the exploits required and kind of uses the same thing, but uh, it doesn't use an application. For example, it doesn't use an app like Pango. It uses a maliciously crafted custom-made farmer. This is it for this video, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope you understood about the uh, kernel, about the boot chain and about the jailbreak types. In the next video, we're going to discuss um, more about these protections, for example, KSLR and ASLR. We're going to discuss about sandboxing and code signing, and I'm going to also give you some practical examples. We're going to also get into hacking. But this is it for, uh, for today. Do not forget to thumb up this video if you think this information is useful, and peace out.